Hey everyone, Yuri Al came here. Welcome to another episode of Ask Yuri. And uh, I don't know if you heard that, that was my, my dog Jack sitting behind me. He just had a nice big yawn. Here he is. Hey buddy. All right, so uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about diabetes today. We're going to talk about what it is, how it's caused, how you can, you know, kind of get over it. Um, yeah, so this is a question that I, I got recently. And a little bit of commotion going on here with the dog, so let's, uh, let's try to focus. Okay, so uh, we'll get to, okay, so basically the first question is what are the dangers of diabetes? Uh, so first off, let's look at the causes of diabetes. Diabetes pretty much is a condition that is uh, kind of uh, defined as being insulin resistant. So your, your muscle cells, your cells in your body do not recognize insulin. And that's a problem because insulin, what it does is it, it's kind of like a messenger that goes to your cells and says, hey, you know, open up. We need to let some sugar in. We need to let, you know, if you've had a meal and your blood sugar goes, you know, is elevated, you need to get that sugar out of the blood, uh, otherwise it becomes very dangerous. So what insulin does is when it notices that there's higher levels of uh, sugar in the blood, the pancreas secretes insulin into the blood and it'll circulate to the muscle cells, the liver and all that stuff, and it'll say, hey, open up, let these guys in, get them out of the blood, store them as glycogen, and the whole bit, right? That's a, that's a normal process. But what happens with, with diabetes is that the cells don't respond to insulin anymore. So therefore there's no sugar that's able to get into the cells. So that's why, you know, you have, you know, sugar sitting in the blood and that's not a very good thing. Okay. So it, it's a progressive disease. The, usually the, the first kind of stages are, um, uh, hypoglycemia, right? So if you've had hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, if you have really bad, you know, fluctuating blood sugar issues, that's a beginning stage of diabetes, type 2 diabetes you're talking about. So you want to be careful. You want to, you really want to modify how you're eating, right? Really reducing the refined sugars coming into your body is really the first step you want to, you want to look at. Because if you, the good thing with diabetes is that it's a lifestyle disease. So it can be totally reversed and my dad had type 2 diabetes i know i've worked with a lot of people who've had it as well it can totally be reversed by lifestyle exercise and proper diet okay so reducing the amount of refined sugars reducing the alcohol improving you know whole, you know whole grains if you want a lot more fiber into your diet to slow the release of insulin or sorry slow the release of sugar into the blood and basically improve your body's functioning just through fresh whole foods so the causes of diabetes really, you know, it can be a lot of things, but basically the things that it comes down to are uh, things that are going to play with your blood sugar, right? So high sugar diet, stress, stress is going to put a lot more stress on the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are going to increase the secretion of cortisol and epinephrine. Both of those are going to break down more sugar into the blood because uh, there's more like a fight or flight response type of, um, a type of, uh, type of you know, response. And again, anything that's going to bring more sugar into the blood, not a good thing, okay? Uh, symptoms of diabetes, basically frequent urination, frequent hunger, and frequent thirst, okay? So I should talk about like excessive, like excessive thirst, hunger, and urination. Those are the three hallmark signs of type 2 diabetes. Hunger, thirst, urination, okay? Uh, what are the dangers? Well, the dangers are, you may have heard of... Uh, Di diabetic neuropathy, I can't even remember. A diabetic neuropathy, okay, so when you have a lot of sugar in the blood, right? What ends up happening is that um, it'll, like sugar is acidic, right? So it's gonna start doing bad things within the body. One of the things that happens is neuropathy uh, in the feet, for instance, right? So you'll start losing feeling in your feet because the nerves are being literally attacked or eaten away by the sugar. So there's all sorts of things that can happen from a nervous system perspective. You can also have uh, diabetic retinopathy, so uh, the retina, like in your eye, you can actually go blind from sugar accumulating in the blood vessels in the eye, and that's obviously you just want to lose your eyesight, that's not a good thing. Uh, those are the big dangers. I mean, if you have diabetes, it's linked with heart disease, it's linked with obesity, it's, it's, it's all part and parcel of the same thing, right? It's a lifestyle issue, and come, you know, with that comes other lifestyle issues like heart disease, cancer, obesity, the big, the big four, right? The big four that are really knocking off people left, right, and center in the Western world. How to prevent it? Well, healthy diet and exercise.
okay? The cool thing about exercise is it has the exact same effect as insulin. Uh, insulin, if you took an in insulin injection, just as I mentioned before, with insulin in the blood, uh, it'll basically tell the cells, open up, let the blood sugar in. Exercise does the exact same thing. It, it stimulates receptors within the muscle cells to come to the, cells, to, the, to the cell membranes to open up and allow sugar to come in. So exercise and insulin have the exact same, pretty much the exact same cellular um, effects, right? At the cellular level, insulin and exercise have this pretty much the exact same effect. So if you exercise on a regular basis, that's gonna make a huge difference in your ability to prevent uh, becoming diabetic. Also, if you have diabetes, you wanna get active, right? Because as I just mentioned, exercise is like insulin. So get active, get moving, right? On a daily basis, at the minimum, go for a walk, at the very minimum. Incorporate some strength training. Do some higher intensity training as well. You're gonna really benefit from that. Eating a healthy whole foods, fresh food diet is gonna be huge, right? Limiting the amount of refined sugars in, lots of fruits and veg, lots of fiber. Um, that's gonna be really important. And how to control it if you've already contracted it, basically is just what I've said. It's, it's the exact same steps to prevention in the treatment phase, okay? Uh, just a couple supplemental things you can do. Uh, this is more, again, you, before doing any of this, I mean, I, I should have mentioned this before the beginning of the video, is you want to do, all, obviously you want to monitor yourself with your doctor, with your physician, right? Definitely follow their advice. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple things aside from the food that you can use to help with the blood sugar. Again, if you can get this in the early stages, you're going to be much better off, okay? Uh, so chromium, right? If you want to supplement with chromium, that might be beneficial because chromium is a mineral that is needed for uh, insulin to work properly. So it helps get the glucose, the sugar out of the blood and into the cells. The problem is that chromium is stripped away in a lot of the foods because of the refining process. So supplemental chromium has been shown to be very beneficial for regulating blood sugar. Cinnamon, adding cinnamon to you know, whatever food you like also has a blood sugar taming effect. Most herbs and spices have very, very good healing properties. Cinnamon is one of them. So cinnamon is really good for blood sugar. You can also use another supplement. Again, I would look into using another supplement called Shizandra. Uh, it's a berry. It's, uh, don't even ask me about the spelling. I'll write it out somewhere. But just look for Shizandra in a health food store. It as well has been shown to help regulate blood sugar. Again, check all of this with your doctor first and foremost. But again, even without this stuff, you'll be fine just with exercise, a properly kind of uh, looked over physician and a healthy whole foods diet where you're removing a lot of the refined sugars, removing the carbonated sodas and the alcohol and all that other stress and you know. So the good news of diabetes is that it's pretty much totally reversible and it's totally dependent on you, okay? You need to take responsibility for your health and you need to take responsibility for the fact that you know, you can do something about it. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. Thank you very much once again for the question. Uh, diabetes is a big issue. If you need help eating well, if you need help improving, uh, preventing that, if you don't want to have diabetes in the first place, right? If you need to learn how to eat well, I highly recommend reading my book, Eating for Energy. Okay, the website is eatingforenergy.ca. Start there, okay? It's a really, really good approach to eating and living healthier so that you don't have to get into you know, diabetic states and hypoglycemic states. It's not a lot of fun, guys. So thanks again for tuning in. I'm Uriel Kim, and I'll see you in the next episode.